Hi, I'm Hink Libbe. Today I'm going to talk to you about uh, in DC motors and variable reluctance motors. Now, before we can do that, we have to look at electromagnets. And electromagnet is basically a piece of iron, and around it you wrap an insulated piece of wire. And then, if you let the current go through this piece of wire, then you will have a north pole and south pole being generated inside of this metal, and that is now uh, a magnet. Now, the nice property about this is that if you change this polarity around of the battery or the source, uh, then you will have a change around of the polarity of the electromagnet as well. And that is this, this ability is the thing that we are going to use in um, DC motors. So, next thing that we are going to look at is DC motors. And we say we have a fixed uh, permanent magnet over there as well. And now what we can see is, is that the North Pole and the South Pole are attracting one another over there. The North Pole and the North Pole are repelling each other over there. So this North Pole will want to go to the left hand side. Then over here the same scenario happens except that the South Pole will now want to go in the opposite direction. And now because we've got two forces that are in opposite directions you will have a movement like this. Then next thing that's going to happen is you will see that now the North Pole actually wants to go in the opposite direction as previously. But by just turning the polarity around you will see that you can have now again the same scenario with another 180 degree turn. And by swapping this polarity the whole time we can accomplish this. Now the way that we can accomplish this is by having these circular conductors and brushes that connects onto these conductors. Obviously this is not exactly how it looks in a DC motor but it gives you a great idea of what's happening. So what happens is once you reach this point then you will have a swap over. As soon as you go over these two gaps over there, the polarity will swap over to the other side. And that will cause again a 180 degree turn, which again causes a swap over and you have now a continuous rotation. And this is your DC motor. Next thing that we are going to look at is the variable reluctant stepper motor. Now a stepper motor firstly is a motor that works in certain degrees and it moves to a certain degree at a certain stage. The difference being that the reluctance motor do not have a permanent magnet. Instead it's got just a type of iron core or something in that manner but it's made in a specific way. Uh, the amount of poles you could say on this uh, rotor is going to be less by one than the amount of magnets that we have on the outside as you will see. In any case, so what we do is we energize these magnets and now you will see on this side this part of the rotor and the rotor is now the piece that turns in the middle is closer to that magnet than that piece. So it's going to be attracted a little bit more or maybe a lot more than the part that's further away. And the same thing is happening on the opposite side. So this rotor will rotate through just a certain amount until it lines up. And then it will stay at that position. And this is why we can use stepper motors as well. Because now we can control the amount of turns we want to a, an exact point. Or let's say almost exact. Exact doesn't exist. <laughs> In any case, so we go to the next point, And the rotor is going to move to that point again. And so we can energize and move this rotor. And that's basically the whole layout of this variable reluctant stepper motor. Next thing that we are going to look at is torque and speed curve. 
But before we can do that, we have to look at what is torque and what is speed and that we are talking about over here. Okay, torque firstly, we've got the wrench over here and we've got the nut over there. And if we apply a force over there, that's going to give us a certain torque. It's sort of like a force, but in a rotating manner. Okay, so also the force will be applied at a right angle. Okay, and that is something that is quite logical at this stage. So, now, the bigger the torque is, let's say we make the torque bigger, the more, or the force bigger, rather, the bigger the torque would be. So the bigger the force, the bigger the torque. But there's also a second thing that comes into this whole thing, and that is the distance at the right angle. So the more the distance is, the more the torque will be as well. So to make that an equation, we have an equation that says uh, distance times force, and in this way, you can see the bigger the distance is, the bigger the torque would be, and the bigger the force would be, the bigger the torque would be. Now, angular velocity, we are actually well known to this. It's not something that's new to us. We see this in our cars, and this is the amount of revolutions per minute that we have over here. Um, and that is about it. So, revolutions per minute, as you can see over there. And now, you will see we've got torque on the one side, we've got speed at the bottom, and at the maximum speed, you will have no torque anymore. So, it cannot go and go to a higher speed because there's no torque to make it go to a higher speed. So, then you reach a maximum speed. But if you don't have any speed, you will see you have a maximum torque over there. So you've got now two points on this graph. And you can connect these two points with a straight line when it comes to DC motors. So it's a trade-off between torque and speed. The more the torque would be, the less the speed would be, and vice versa. Now when it comes to your reluctance motor, it looks a little bit different. It has got a curve like that. Thank you very much for looking. Have a nice day. Goodbye.